Now let's look at modeling decoders in VHDL. Uh, when you design MSI logic circuits, you really start to see the power of a hardware description language. Because let's take, for example, a 3 to 8 1 hot decoder. So a 3, three, to, one, three to 8 1 hot decoder has a true table that looks like this. And what's going to happen here is that each of the three inputs can take on, you know, eight unique binary codes, and each of the outputs will assert from one and only one input code. So the true table looks like this. F0 only, only asserts for 0, 0, 0. F1 only asserts for 0, 0, 1, et cetera, et cetera. But remember, in the, in the traditional design approach, what you would do is you would build a circuit for this that would usually have a canonical form. You'd build one for this with a canonical form. You'd build one for that. So you'd have to build eight sp specific circuits. And if you walk through that, uh, you know, you can do it using the canonical form, and you can come up with the eight midterm expressions, and you could then come up with the logic, you know, diagram, and then you could, you know, synthesize it. If you used logical operators, so concurrent signal assignments with logical operators, that would be a very straightforward way to implement, uh, basically, a, a classical design approach that you did by hand. And let's look at that really quick just to show how you would do that with logical operators. So this is my, this is the logic I want to create, so I've got eight logic expressions I need to implement in VHDL. Here's what the entity would look like. Let's call it decoder one hot three to eight. And it's got three input ports. Let's call them scalars, their inputs, their bits. Then I have eight unique outputs, out type bit. And then what we're gonna do here is, now that we have our logic expressions, I can look at the, I can look at the uh, architecture of this to model the behavior. So I'm gonna have an architecture, and then I'm gonna begin, and I'm just simply going to do eight concurrent signal assignments with logical operators that represent these eight logic expressions. So this is nothing more, this is almost exactly like a text-based schematic of the classical digital design approach. It's still probably easier to do it this way than it would be by hand and wired up, uh, but this just shows that how you would get started using VHDL to do this. Now the power of VHDL is not shown in a, con a conditional, excuse me, in a uh, concurrent signal assignment. It really is shown when you look at the conditional signal assignments and selected signal assignments. So let's take a look at that exact same example where we're implementing this one-hot decoder, but this time I'm going to implement it with a conditional signal assignment. So this is now going to be an example of a conditional signal assignment. So right here is, this is uh, conditional. And this is a conditional signal assignment. And remember, you can assign two vectors. So just like you assigned to scalars. So what I can do is I can take advantage of vector notation of the inputs and say, you know, let's just represent the input. We'll call it a vector called ABC, and let's represent it as a three-bit input. And then let's represent the output, call it F, and then we will have it be defined as an eight-bit bit vector. So now when you look at the decoder, I have ABC, and notice there's no spaces in here, so this is a single variable name. It's input, type in, and it's a bit vector three down to zero, which is three bits wide. Then you have an output, which is called F, and it's an out bit vector type, and it's seven down to zero, meaning that it's an eight bit bits wide. So look at what we can do here. We can assign to F, the output vector, a particular code when the input is a particular value. So if you look at, let's just focus in right here on just that first one. I said F gets 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 when it, the input is 0, 0, 0. So that's exactly what the functionality is directly out of the truth table. And I can actually just do that for each and every possible input code, code using the else clause and just cascade them together until ultimately I have the entire functionality modeled with a very, very readable and very compact uh, manner. Now notice that I didn't put anything in here about AND gates or inverters or anything like that. I'm going to allow a synthesizer to do that. But look how easy that was. You, you went almost directly from the true table directly into the implementation. Now let's look at a selected signal assignment, which gives the same behavior. Uh, so in a selected signal assignment, it's even a more compact approach. So this would be a selected signal assignment. And in this situation, we have less text because selected signal assignment. In this situation, you don't have to list out the, the input variable. So you just say, with ABC, select. And so then you can say, when the input code is 000, assign F that, out, that code. So you can list them all down, 
and it's even more compact. So these two are identical behavior. One is a conditional single assignment, one's a selected single assignment. But you can start to see how you can model very, you know, larger, larger and larger systems using VHDL. You know, all the while kind of understanding that beneath the synthesizer, it's actually implementing this using the classical digital design approach. It's just that you're going to let the automated CAD tool do that for you. So let's also look at, why don't we take a look at the, let's take a look at the one-hot decoder, or excuse me, the uh, seven-segment display decoder. So we had talked about the seven-segment display decoder, and we designed it by hand. Uh, so this is the tape for it. Now, in this situation, we really have you know, seven outputs, and these are their values. So we can model this exactly like we did with the one-hot decoder. We can simply come in here, and we can, let's try to get these both on the same page here. So this is my table that I want, and this is the implementation that I'm gonna do. So notice that I have the table up here. So I basically entered this, this is the same table. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define my output as a vector, and I'm gonna call it F, but it's only going to be seven bits wide because the output for the seven segment decoder is seven lines. So I still have three inputs uh, representing binary code 000 to 111. But when I come into my entity definition, this time it's a decoder seven segment, and I define the output to be six down to zero. So that's seven bits wide. But take a look at the conditional signal assignment. So now I'm going to come back up here, and this is my conditional signal assignment. And it's very similar to that. You just basically type in the table directly into VHDL for each and every input combination. So you would implement this very, almost exactly like the one-hot decoder, it's just you give different values for the output depending on the input codes. Same thing with a selected signal assignment, but it's even more compact. You just simply enter that directly into VHDL. So this is where you start seeing the power of VHDL because in such a compact description of behavior, you've actually created seven separate and unique combinational logic circuits, but you didn't have to go through the manual process of creating, you know, carnal maps for each and every one. So that's the power of VHDL and MSI logic design.